Hey, what's up? It's Nathan Williams with Crazy Marketing. Now this video right here is a compilation of several videos that help make up the course that you're taking right now. Now to help you navigate through everything, I've provided timestamps down below in the description. So I recommend going, check out those timestamps, watching what's relevant to you. Let's get into it. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and go through the basic campaign setup. So you see exactly what it looks like when you're creating a campaign in Google Ads. Now, as we do the example, the practical example, and I give you like an over the shoulder view of myself setting up a campaign, like we're gonna do this a bunch of different times in some different ways. So you'll see this in more detail later on. Uh, this video right here though is more of like an overview. So that way you're familiar with it. So that way when we do the practical example, like things will make more sense. So let's get into it. I'm in Google ads and I'm under the overview area, but we could also come to campaigns over here and we see that we don't have any campaigns going on at this time. So we can hit new campaign or click this blue plus button and then we'll just do new campaign. And we basically just go through the steps. And so the first thing we need to do is select the goal that would make this campaign successful to you. So we have sales, leads, website traffic, product and brand consideration, brand awareness and reach and app promotion, and then create a campaign without a goals guidance. So all these ones that have the blue circle in them, um, they typically require larger budgets in order to operate. Like you need to spend a couple hundred dollars a day on these campaigns oftentimes in order for them to even start showing because Google needs you know, a lot of data or data to make a decision. And in order to get that lots of data, they need money spent. And so you need to have a larger budget so while these options are great because they automatically optimize your campaigns, ad groups and ads for you based off of whatever goal you select, like if you select sales, well then the algorithm's going to optimize to get you more sales. So if your budget's large enough and you can get these objectives or goals to work, then awesome. They're great, I recommend using them. However, oftentimes as small business owners, like we, we're not operating with hundreds or thousands of dollars a day in ad spend. So we can also use this create a campaign without a goals guidance. And what this basically means is there's not gonna be any automatic optimization. However, we can do our own manual optimization, which can be you know just as good, if not better than the auto optimization. And also you can do this with much smaller budgets, like as low as $5 a day, and you can start running traffic to it and getting the data that you need. And so you can personally make decisions. So just to recap, because I get a lot of questions about this, Selecting these goals is good if your budget's large enough and Google will run your ads. And oftentimes I recommend starting by selecting these goals and setting up your campaign with these goals in mind and see if Google starts running your ads for you. And if it doesn't run your ads, then we switch over to this other manual mode. And again, manual mode here is great because you can do it with smaller budgets and also you're in control of everything. So if you wanna turn on or off a keyword or increase or decrease budgets or whatever else, like you are in control. So even if you do have that larger budget, sometimes this option's a great option if you like having that control and you don't wanna use the auto optimization features. And as we go through the practical example together, I'm gonna to select some of these auto optimization features and we're also gonna do it without using the goals guidance. So later on, you'll be able to see the difference. All right, for this video, we're gonna go without a campaign goals guidance. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the training. Real quick, I have a special offer that I wanna to present to you where you can get a digital copy of my book as well as an audio copy. Plus I'm giving away 20 pre-written emails that make your email writing a piece of cake. And finally, I have a seven figure funnel. It's the first funnel that I built that generated over seven figures for a small business. And it includes training on how to actually set up the funnel. If you're interested in that, plus several other bonuses, link in the description down below, or there'll be a link in the little box up above here. So if you're interested, check it out. Back to the training. And now we have to select a campaign type. So there's search, display, shopping, video, apps, smart, and discovery. Of course, we're doing video stuff, so we're gonna select video here. And then it gives us a campaign subtype. So we have custom video campaign, non-skippable in-stream, out-stream, drive conversions, ad sequence, shopping. And you can go ahead and read the descriptions of them right here and or click the learn more button to learn more about the various subtypes that we have. But I typically use the custom video campaign subtype and I also will mess with the drive conversions subtype. Now, the thing with this drive conversion subtype is it's quite similar to these options up here in that if your budget's not large enough, your ads might not run. So it's worth trying because if you're going for conversions, then 
using Google's algorithm to optimize automatically for conversions, you know, makes your life easier. Again, you can go ahead and manually optimize for conversions as well. And that's what you can go ahead and do with the custom video campaign option right here. And when we go ahead and set up the campaign together, I'll use these two different subtypes. So you'll see how they work. But for the sake of example in this video, we're just gonna go with custom video campaign and continue. And now we can go ahead and figure our campaign. So first things first, to kind of break it down for you, the campaign structure in Google Ads is you have your campaign, which is the top level, and at the campaign level, that's when you set your budget. And then below that, you have ad groups, so you can have multiple ad groups within your campaign. And then ad group is when you set up your targeting options, so like your audiences or your keywords. And then within ad groups, you have your ads. So those are the videos that you created and you have them inside your ad group. So that's the structure. You have campaign, ad groups, and ads. And we're gonna walk through the entire process right now. So we have campaign name. So I'm just gonna call it demo for now, but I'll have another video on naming conventions because you wanna be able to name these things well so you can keep, things, keep them organized because you're gonna wind up having a lot of different campaigns and it can be very overwhelming if you don't have things named well. But for the sake of example, I'm just gonna go with demo bidding strategy, so we can click this option right here, and we have a drop down. so we have maximum CPV, which is cost per view, and then we also have target CPM, which is cost per thousand impressions. I recommend going with maximum CPV, so you're bidding based off of how much you wanna spend for somebody to watch 30 seconds or more of your video, unless your video is less than 30 seconds, in which case a view would count as them watching the whole video. So CPV is what I recommend doing. Uh, budget and dates, obviously, this is self-explanatory, so you can do a daily budget or a campaign total budget, so up to you. I typically start off with like $5 a day, just, just for example, but if you have larger budget, you can spend more or less. Again, when we set up the campaign, as a practical example, you'll see what I'm doing with my budgets. And then for dates, if you wanna go ahead and set up a start date, you could go ahead and do that, as well as an end date, so you can configure that as well. Uh, networks down here. Um, you wanna go ahead and leave YouTube search results and YouTube videos checked for the time being. When you get down to setting up your ads, you can change where your ad's gonna pop up, so we'll change that there. But what you probably wanna do is turn off video partners on the display network. There's been dozens of case studies on this little checkbox here, and basically it's a, mini, a money pit. So it's a way for Google to make a lot of money, um, but it doesn't provide a lot of results for you. So recommend unchecking this box when you're creating your campaigns. Languages, self-explanatory, you probably wanna advertise to the people that speak the same language as you, or at least that your videos are in. So we'll go with English. Uh, locations, obviously, self-explanatory, so you select the ones that's appropriate to you. Or you can come down here and do like advanced search. And what's pretty cool here is like the radius function. So you could go ahead and plug in like a address or something like that. Like if you have a small business and you have an address, so you could plug that address in there. You could select, you know, a five or 10 mile radius. And then you could basically dominate that five to 10 mile radius um, with your targeting here. So pretty cool targeting options. Again, just select what's relevant to you. Coming on down here, we have inventory type. So we have expanded inventory, standard inventory, limited inventory. And if you click this compare inventory types, it shows you what the differences are. So based off of you know what, what you're selling and who you wanna target, you select the different options. Of course, expanded inventory, your, your ad might pop up you know, next to terrorist activities or something like that. Whereas limited activity, you know, your ad's only next to G-rated videos. Um, and standard inventory, you might get to like PG-13 videos or something like that. So anyway, you can go ahead and select what's relevant and look at the compare and see what makes sense. All right, moving on down here, we have excluded types and you can opt out from showing your ads on content that doesn't fit your brand. So I recommend opting out of embedded YouTube videos as well as live streaming videos, unless of course it makes sense. Like if you're a live streamer and you wanna attract other live streamers, then maybe you leave this option checked. So, you know, it's open to, to your interpretation. Also, maybe you wanna unselect mature audiences, depending again on your business. Uh, but I just wanted to show you these options are available to you. And then we have this additional settings. Make sure you click this right here because it's pretty important. Um, we come on down here, we have, so we have two options here. We can use the account level include in conversion setting. So basically what this is, all the conversions that you have set up, 
you know, we, we went over to the tools and settings and we set up our conversions. So basically any conversion you want to, you want to track that as a conversion uh, versus you could choose which conversions and actions you're going after for this particular campaign. So I typically recommend, you know, choosing this option so that way you're you're optimizing for whatever conversion objective you want. Uh, so for example, if I come in here and I want to optimize for sales funnel blueprint downloads, well then I would go ahead and click this option here and save. So now I'm optimizing only for the those sales funnel blueprint downloads and not optimizing for any sort of conversion whatsoever. So, you know, this is again, personal preference depending on your objective, but if you wanna optimize for certain objectives, you wanna choose this one. If you wanna optimize for any sort of conversion whatsoever, you, you can do your entire account level conversion options. All right, coming on down here, we have different devices. So if we can set targeting for specific devices, um, I typically recommend turning off TV screens unless you're doing like a branding campaign. But if people are watching YouTube on their TV, they're like, I don't know if you've ever watched any YouTube on a TV, but you can't like click on the ad. You can just watch the ad. So being the fact that you're likely trying to drive some sort of action or conversion or something like that, you probably only wanna be targeting people that are using devices that they can click on things with, right? So like computer, mobile phones, tablets. So of course, pick what's well relevant for you. Um, then we got operating systems, device models, networks. So if any of that's relevant to you, you can click into it. It's self-explanatory, the options inside of it. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on it because it probably only impacts 3% of you people watching this video. Uh, frequency capping, so this is pretty handy. Uh, so this way you're not driving your audience insane by you know, spamming them with your ads. So you can go ahead and cap impression frequency. And so this is how many times um, that the ads in the campaign will show to the same user. So you might wanna show it like once per day, like give them the opportunity once per day to see an ad. Now, if you're doing a retargeting campaign and it's the last day of the sale or something like that, I mean, you might wanna ramp it up to, you know, five, five impressions in a day or something like that. So, you know, this depends on your goal or objective. So this is pretty nice so you're not overwhelming your audience with your ads. Uh, you can also cap view frequency. And again, a view is somebody viewing your ad for 30 seconds or longer. Or if your ad is less than 30 seconds, well then they're viewing the whole thing. So if you wanna cap views, you could do that as well. Um, ad schedule, so when you wanna run your ads. And so this comes down to personal preference. You could run it all day, of course, if you're online and it doesn't matter when somebody's viewing your ad or if you have business hours and you might wanna only run ads during your normal business hours and so on. So set that to your own personal preferences. All right, coming on down here, we get into the ad group settings now. So I'm just gonna call this ad group. And this is where we start selecting who we're going to target. So here's people. So we have demographics and audiences, and then we can also select content. So this is keywords, topics, and placements. So this is where, where we want our ads to show up. So let's go into demographics real quick. Now I've talked about this previously, but I'll talk about it again real quick since we're here. Google doesn't know as much about people browsing their websites as like Facebook does. So it's not 100% sure if it's a male or a female or the age ranges or the parental status or household income. So this stuff is not the most accurate. Take it with a grain of salt. And personally, I usually leave it wide open because I'm more interested in targeting specific audiences like a custom intent audience or a remarketing audience, or I'm interested in targeting certain keywords. And that's how I'm doing my targeting. But if for some reason you wanna go ahead and mess with this, you can go ahead and uncheck boxes or check boxes up to you. But I typically leave it alone, so I'm gonna minimize it. Um, audiences, so we've talked about audiences previously, but this is where you go ahead and you can select them. So you could go ahead and search or ideas or browse. This is probably where you wanna go. Um, so we have who they are, detailed demographics, what their interests or habits are, and this is your affinity and custom affinity audiences, what they're actively researching or planning. So in market life events and custom intent, so your custom intent audiences how they've interacted with your business, so your remarketing and similar audiences, and then you have combined audiences, so your audience combination. So this is where you go ahead and select the audiences that we've created previously, but I'll go through these real quick. So who they are, so here's some more uh, demographic type information. Again, Google doesn't know as much as Facebook does in terms of who's using their platform, so take this stuff with a grain of salt right here. Uh, here's your affinity audiences, so you could go ahead and use a pre-built 
affinity audience and you see all the options in here like banking and finance food and dining you can click this drop down and you see more options and again affinity audiences are for scale like massive branding campaigns so more than likely you're not going to mess with an affinity audience because they're too large too much scale and they're not they're not meant for small businesses so then coming on down here we get into our intent audiences so let's click into this option and the first thing we see is our custom intent audiences. So here we could go ahead and select our, our custom intent audience uh, if we wanna go ahead and target it. Alternatively, we could create a new custom intent audience by clicking right here and just going through that process right there. Also, you notice that it kind of updated our available impressions, so that can be handy as well because when we built our custom intent audience, it didn't really give us an estimate of how many impressions we might get but now we see okay so we got some impressions that'll be happening with this custom intent audience so very cool and let me remove this real quick so i don't mess anything else up then we have the in-market audiences and these are like the pre-created audiences that uh google has made so you could go ahead and select relevant categories for you and your business um, if it makes sense to do it and then we also have life events as well so you could go through here and see if there's any sort of life events um, that are relevant to to you. And again, when we set up our campaign together, uh, I'm gonna use some custom intent audiences to, to try and bring in some cold traffic. So I'm gonna be using this option. And then if we move on down, we get into remarketing and similar audiences. So let's click in here real quick. So we have website visitor. So here's our remarketing audiences we could go ahead and choose from. So, you know, visited the sales funnel book page or all visitors and so on. We also have our YouTube one, so we can select that audience as well. So this is how you go ahead and select your remarketing audiences. And then we get into combined audiences, and this is pretty cool actually. So if they're on this list and this list, but not on this list, then we wanna target them. And so you can come up with all sorts of crazy combinations uh, using this feature right here. So that's a quick overview on audiences. And again, we're gonna do it some more as we set stuff up together. All right, coming on down, then we get into like keywords. So we could go ahead and set up keyword targeting and we're gonna do this when we build a campaign together. So it could be like click funnels um, or whatever else keywords that are relevant to you. You could also get keywords ideas by plugging in like a website and we could go ahead and add all ideas real quick. And over on the right hand side, we see how many impressions we might be able to get with the keywords and other information we've selected up here. Um, so you can keep an eye on your, your weekly estimates. So that's handy. And again, we're gonna do a lot of stuff with keywords later, so that's why I'm going over it pretty quickly. Topics, so topics is a lot like affinity audiences. They're very broad. Um, I haven't had any good experience with them, so I mean, if you wanna mess with them, go for it. But I think there's more than enough options between keywords and custom intent audiences and remarketing audiences that messing around with topics isn't isn't worth your time uh, placements can be kind of handy so you can select different locations you want your ads to show up on so you could like get ads to show up on different youtube channels or youtube videos so if you want your ads to show up on a specific channel you can plug it in here and basically your ads will show on that channel now there's a few assumptions that need to be made uh, first things first, that channel needs to allow ads on it. So if that channel is not monetized, well then your ads aren't going to show on that channel. So placement targeting can be hit or miss. And I don't usually mess with it because again, we have plenty of options with keywords and custom intent and remarketing audiences that I don't see a need for messing with placements personally. All right, so CPV is your maximum cost per view that you're willing to spend. Typically, I start with like five cents and see if I start getting impressions and views on my ads. If I need to increase my bid, then I increase it. Or if I can decrease it, I decrease it. Again, when we launch our campaign together, we'll go through optimizing and looking at all this stuff so we know if we need to increase or decrease and so on. Uh, top content bid adjustment. So, of course, some videos, you know, are popular and there's a lot of people trying to advertise on those videos. And if you want to be you know, in the running to get on those videos, well then you might need to bid a little more. So maybe you want to, you're willing to double your budget for these uh, top content videos. So you know, put in 100% there. So instead of being willing to spend five cents, you're willing to spend 10 cents to appear on those top content videos. And then finally we get on down here to create your video ad. So this is pretty simple. Uh, we just go over to YouTube, we grab our link to our video, 
and we go ahead and paste it in this box here and I grabbed the wrong link I grabbed the edit link so that's not very helpful so let me come back in here and I'll grab this link right here and come back over and paste it in there and so there we go there's my ad so I have a couple different options here. I have skippable in-stream ad and I have video discovery ad. And I'll kind of show you the differences real quick, but before I do that, remember uh, for acquisition, we can use discovery and in-stream ads. And this is to get basically educational or informational material in front of your audience. Basically, you're, you're bringing in cold traffic and you're warming them up. Uh, that's when you'd want to use discovery ads. The rest of the time, you're typically using in-stream ads, which means you're putting your ad right in front of people whether they wanna see it or not. A discovery ad is a little less intrusive as I'm about to show you. So let's come back over here. So video discovery ad is you know, an ad that pops up like if somebody does a search on YouTube, then they could see your ad being, or your video being recommended to them to watch. And so they have to go ahead and click on your ad. Like they're inviting themselves to watch your video, right? They're, they want to watch it because they clicked on it and they wanna see it. And this is why I really like discovery ads because the person is clicking and engaging on their own. You're not like shoving your, your business down their throat. And it gives you a preview of what your ad will look like. So as YouTube search ad on a mobile device versus a desktop device. So you see somebody searches for a keyword or whatever your targeting options are and there's your ad right at the top and so on. Also, your ad could be um, under a related video. So, you know, on a mobile device, it's underneath of it. On a desktop device, your ad could be over here on the top right. Like, so they're watching a video about ClickFunnels here and they see your ad about ClickFunnels over here and they're like, oh, cool. I'll go ahead and watch that one next. But again, it's them initiating watching the video. Like they want to watch it, they clicked on it. You're not shoving it down their throat, which is why discovery ads are great for converting cold traffic to warm traffic because they're coming into your world on their own accord. So I like discovery ads a lot and we're gonna do it when we set up a campaign. And then of course you can go ahead and customize your ad a little bit. You could change the thumbnail around, you could change your headline, description, and so on. So of course you wanna do something eye-catching that tries to get people to click through to watch your video, right? And then we do have the skippable in-stream ad. So this is the ad that's you know intrusive, basically. Like your ad is popping up before they watch the video that they actually wanna watch. So. You've seen these ads, you've seen all the ads if you've been on YouTube at all and you don't use an ad blocker, you've seen the ads. So all these ad types should not be foreign to you because you've seen them, but we can go ahead and customize our in-stream ad. So you can go ahead and throw your, your website in there where you wanna take people. So I'll just do my website, display URL. So you can customize that. We can also add a call to action. So this is where you go ahead and, you know, hey, click here to download or visit or read or learn more or whatever, right? So, and I'm over the character limit. So let's try something else, get. So there, sales funnels, download. So anyway, you don't have a lot of characters to play with. So, you know, you gotta do, do the best you can with what you got. And then we have add URL options down here. So you could go ahead and add some different tracking. So if you use a tracking tool um, other than Google Analytics, then you could go ahead and append those parameters here. If you're using Google Analytics, well, obviously Google Ads already plays well with Google Analytics and you're gonna be tracking things automatically. So more than likely, you're not gonna mess with this stuff. And if you are gonna mess with it, you already know you're gonna mess with it because you have a tracking platform that you're already familiar with. But for our purposes, and since we're using Google Analytics, we can go ahead and minimize it. All right, companion banner, which is on computers only. So it's a little banner up here that pops up next to the video. Uh, the auto-generated one is what looks like right here, basically. So you see it right there. It's the same thing as your call to action. Uh, or you could go ahead and upload a file that you know brings people in. Maybe it's a little prettier or something to that effect. So. And I personally usually just do the auto-generated banner because it looks familiar and people are like used to seeing this type of format and they know if they come up here, they have a little banner they could click on if they wanna learn more. And then you can of course preview it on a mobile device as well. So this is what it looks like on a mobile device. And then of course, finally, you can go ahead and name your ad if you want to change the name of it. And then finally, on the right-hand side, you see your weekly estimates based off of all the 
the decisions you've made, so your, your CPV amount, your keywords, your audiences, your targeting, your budget, your frequency caps, all that stuff, all these options you finally see, like a snapshot of what they estimate um, you're gonna get. So between 740 to 2,000 views, 2,000 to 4,500 impressions, your average cost per view, Cost per view is less than five cents. Budget spend is about 100%. So hopefully after going through this entire process, you have information over here. If it's saying that you're gonna have like zero views, then you probably have something too specific. Maybe your budget's too small or your keyword doesn't have enough searches on it or your audience is too small or something like that. So the point is you should see something over here, either that or be able to know why it's a zero audience. And if you're good with all this type of stuff, then you can come on down here and hit create campaign and it gives you a little summary of everything you've done so you could go ahead and check it out if you want to I'm just gonna hit continue to campaign and boom just like that we've gone ahead and set up a campaign and I think this video is long enough so I'm gonna go through a few other campaign options in the next video all right in the last video we went through all the steps to set up a campaign ad group and ad now this video is like part two of that because after you've done those first steps, then it unlocks more steps you can go ahead and take. Uh, one of the primary things is exclusions are now like unlocked. So you can add different exclusions to your targeting efforts. So let's go in and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm all the way out here at the very top level into campaigns and I see the campaign that I just set up. So to go into it, we just click on it and you'll notice like at the top here, uh, this kind of gives us like where we are. So we're in all campaigns and we're in our demo campaign now. So you kind of use this as your navigation. So if you want to go back to all campaigns, you click up there and so on. So this is like your main navigation up at the top here. And then on the left hand side, we have like essentially our demo campaign navigation. So when we click in different options here, we'll see information related to our demo campaign. So we could look at the videos inside of it, the keywords, audiences, etc. But what I wanted to primarily go to right now is just the settings. So if you wanted to come back in here and adjust some settings, like maybe your budget or rename it or change your networks or languages or your CPV or anything like that, you can come back in here and change your various campaign settings. So if you mess something up, you can come in here to change it uh, by going to your settings. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. And then we can also make changes to our topics, locations, ad schedule, devices, advanced bid adjustment, and change history. So like if we come into topics real quick, we can browse through here. And again, I don't recommend using topics because they're very broad, just like affinity audiences. So we don't typically use it, but if you wanted to make adjustments, you could add topics here, or you could also do exclusions. So you could exclude different topics if you wanna do that. A location, so if you wanna change your location, um, you can do it, do so here. And again, there's also exclusion. So if you're like, well, you know what? Virginia, Virginia sucks. I hate Virginia. So we can go ahead and exclude Virginia. Virginia, United States exclude. So now we're targeting everybody in the United States, uh, less people that live in Virginia. So the exclusion thing can be very powerful um, and you can do a lot with exclusions. We're gonna do a lot with exclusions when we set things up because we wanna exclude people that have already opted in or have already purchased something. Or if we do find out that different states suck, then we can go ahead and exclude, exclude different states and so on. So exclusions are very powerful and that's usually how you, you optimize your campaigns. Uh, but coming on down here, we also can mess with our ad schedule if we want to so we can you know, add different hours, subtract hours, so on. So if you need to make some changes from your initial setup, you can go ahead and do that by clicking through all these settings and options. Now let me come back up to ad groups real quick and we'll click into our ad group. And now we're basically in the ad group navigation right here. So all this stuff impacts this particular ad group. And I wanna come down to settings real quick so we can check out the settings. So if we wanted to change our bidding, we could go ahead and change our bidding in our ad group or our top content bid adjustment. Uh, so we can change that around if we want to. And then we could also click into like keywords over here and we could go ahead and adjust our various keywords. Like we could turn them on or off based off of the results they're producing, or we could increase and decrease their budget based off of, you know, specific keywords. Like maybe this one's doing really well and we want to try and drive more traffic to it. So we might increase our CPV on that particular keyword. And we'll go through all this stuff when we are, we're setting up our campaigns and optimizing them. And you can see what it looks like when you're in increasing and decreasing and all that type of stuff. But I just wanted to show you that 
this is where you can come in here and make adjustments. Also, there's like negative keywords. So this is basically exclusion. So like, for example, a, a common uh, keyword that's excluded is free. Like if you don't want people searching for free stuff unless you're giving away for something for free. But if you're trying to sell something, you might want to exclude the, the word free from your advertising efforts. And you can apply it to either the campaign level or the ad group level. So you make sure it's relevant to you. So in this case, I'm just going to choose my ad group level. I want to exclude it from that one. And I'll go ahead and hit save. And it says I got to select an ad group. So let me do that real quick. Ad group. Okay and save. And so that's how you can go ahead and make adjustments to keywords. Um, and then we have like our audiences. So this is important stuff. So like I was talking about a minute ago, we can do, we can add different audiences or exclude audiences. So we might want to exclude, you know, people that have already purchased from us or something to the, that effect. So I can select my ad group here. I can go ahead and browse how they've interacted with our business. And maybe I already want to, I want to exclude people that have already visited my page and so on. So the point is there's a lot of different options that have opened up now that we've got, gone live and we can come in here now and make different adjustments to things if we need to. And really it just takes some practice clicking around to see like where things are and what can be adjusted and how you can adjust it and so on. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory once you figure out where to click, but I mainly just wanted to point out that there's more options now that you're live and I think you think you got it now. Um, we could also go ahead and adjust our devices if we want to. Like if we realize like mobile phones aren't working well, we could go ahead and decrease our budget by you know 100%. And or if computers are working very well, we could increase our budget by 50% or so on. So you can do a lot of different stuff is my point. And now if I want to go to my ads, I can come up here and I see my ads. And here's where you can go ahead and add multiple ads. So if you want to add a new ad to your ad group, you could go ahead and do it right here. So same process as creating an ad previously. Um, you just create it right here in the ad group. So this way you can have multiple ads running. And you can also turn your ads on or pause them if you want to. So this is how we go about optimizing everything. And again, we'll go through this process together, but I'm just trying to give you uh, an overview right now. So that way it's not brand new to you when we're doing it in real life. And then again, come back up here for your navigation so we can come back out here to our all campaigns. And now we're right back where we started. And what I actually wanna go ahead and do is I'm gonna pause this campaign because I don't want it to actually run. So I was gonna pause it real quick so I don't have any money going out. This is for demonstration purposes only. And that's pretty much it for this video. The main thing is I wanted to show you that there are more options available to you and that you can also start doing exclusions now. And exclusions are very powerful because you can start excluding people or keywords or locations or devices that aren't working. And that's how you really optimize your campaigns. In this video, we're gonna quickly talk about campaign structure and naming. And we're gonna go through this several times when we set up the campaign together. So you'll see it and see it in practical example, but I wanna give you an overview first so you know what is coming. So basically, you're gonna have a campaign, right? Because at the campaign level, that's where you set your budget. So typically, you have a bunch of different campaigns because you'll have a bunch of different bu budgets going on and you'll see it as we set it up. But again, you have your campaign, your budget is set up that campaign. And then how I go ahead and like position it or I name it, I start with the tier of the campaign. So whether it's an acquisition or a direct or retargeting, and we went over this before. So acquisition, you know, that's your cold audiences and you're trying to warm them up, convert them in from cold to warm, know who you are, all that type of stuff. And then we might have a direct campaign, which is trying to take like a cold audience and convert them straight into a, a lead or a buyer or some sort of action, right? And then we have the retargeting campaigns going on, which are, you know, getting our warm audiences and trying to get them to take more action, whether that's clicking on stuff, opting in for things, buying things, etc. So those are the three tiers and I've talked about it before, but that's how I usually name it. You know, I start with the tier that it is and then the type of uh, targeting it is. So whether it's in-stream or discovery ad and then the video title. So usually there's like one video in each campaign now I might have two videos uh, depending on how I'm structuring things. But anyway, so you'll have the video title or the video topic that you have in this campaign. And then I go ahead and I include the keyword group or audience name. So that way I, I know who I'm targeting with this campaign. So I might do like KW for keyword, of course, and then like keyword sales funnels. So a bunch of sales funnel related keywords would be my, my targeting options. Or if I'm doing like an affinity audience or an intent audience and, you know, I 
include a description for it. So it might be like IA, or I also call it CI sometimes, so custom intent. Um, IA or CI, sales funnel, so it would be my, my sales funnel keywords, right? And then I close it out with the name of the country that I'm targeting, so that way I know who I'm targeting. And then within each campaign, I typically have two, three, or four different ad groups, uh, depending on how I want to structure things. And I have basically an ad group per device because at the ad group level, that's where you go ahead and you can set up different devices. And this also helps with optimization later on so I can turn devices on or off or increase bid or decrease bid and so on. So that's why I go ahead and separate them out at the ad group level. Now, typically I just do two ad groups. I'll do a desktop ad group and then I'll do a mobile and tablet ad group. And then I don't advertise to TV ever. So I never advertise there, but if you want to, you can go ahead and have an ad group for TV as well. And we'll go through setting up multiple ad groups in these follow on videos. So you'll see exactly how that process works. And then within each ad group, I'll have one to three different ads. And again, usually it's the same video, but I might change like the description or the title or the call to action or something to that effect. Uh, so I can go ahead and test things out. And so that's pretty much it for this video. Again, you'll see this again um, as we go through and set everything up. So it'll make more sense, but I wanted to get in front of you so you start thinking about it prior to when we're actually using it to create campaigns. Alrighty, so I hope you enjoyed the training. Now I have a quick special offer for you. So if you want a digital copy as well as an audio copy of my book here, as well as 20 pre-written emails to make your email copywriting a piece of cake. And I also have a seven figure funnel. It's the first funnel that I built that generated over seven figures of revenue for a small business. And the funnel includes a course on how to set it up and also how to actually sell that funnel to small businesses. So if you're interested in starting a digital marketing agency, that course and that funnel are, are an ideal option for you and there's a bunch of other benefits and stuff bonuses and stuff anyway link in the description down below or there's going to be a little button probably up here in the video if you're interested in checking it out yeah just just check it out if you're interested um and other than that i hope you have a great rest of the day